Hello, welcome back to the Vintage Model Company YouTube channel. This is the build guide for the Balsa Basics BF109. It should help you to assemble your model kit. You can use this video entirely or use it as an additional helping guide along with the text instructions that go along with this aircraft. We'll cover the build all the way up to the first flight and link to some other videos that go over essential building skills such as covering in more depth. Firstly, let's build the motor and battery in a fuselage box. Make sure to lay your parts out and get your electronics all set up before embarking on this build. Check out our setting up electronics video if you need help with this. Start by removing the parts you'll need for the fuselage. You can either pop these out with your fingers or use a craft knife. If you're using the 2213B motor, locate the motor mount F2B and F2C. If the larger recommended 2215C motor is being used, use F2C only. We're using the recommended C-type motor for this plane, so insert the T-nuts into the pre-drilled holes on the rear of F2C. Do this on F2B if using a B motor. Now you will need to find these components. Dry assemble the parts like so, but don't add glue at this stage. You can hold the parts together and place the subassembly onto a plywood fuselage side, ensuring that the tabs fit into their respective slots. Insert F2C into place on the C position on the fuselage side and F2B into the B position if you're using the B mount. Place the second fuselage side on top. Make sure that everything is square and that the sides are aligned before wicking super glue or CA cyano glue into all of the joints and tabs. Bring the front fuselage sides together and add former F1 to the front. Now locate the back of the cockpit part, F6, and glue it to the slots at the rear of this cockpit area. Now locate these parts. Dry assemble the balsa fuselage sides onto the inner fuselage box, ensuring that the right and left sides are correctly positioned. Dry assemble formers F8 and F9, and then bring the rear of the fuselage sides together to insert former F10. Ensure that the fuselage sides are correctly aligned with each other before adding glue into the rear joint and the formers. Find this part, F5, and stick it into this slot. Now find these keel formers from sheet 1 and insert them into the top centre slots. Thank you. 
Insert these longer ones into the nose slots. The fin is an integral part of the fuselage and needs to be assembled before proceeding. The fin is made up of these four parts which are assembled like so. Glue them together, making sure not to stick them to your build table. Give both sides of the fin a gentle sanding and also round the leading edge. Place the fin onto the rear of the fuselage like this. Ensure that it is aligned before adding glue to secure it in place. Find this K4 part and install it like so. Glue it down when you're happy that it looks straight. Sand this top deck to a rounded shape following on from the profiles of the formers. Add the rear stringers like so. Taper the stringers where they attach to the fin. Now for the battery hatch, find these parts. Start by placing tape over the surfaces where the hatch will contact the fuselage. Now we can assemble the battery hatch in place like this for a good fit. Add stringers and cut them to size. Check that the hatch fits nicely and sand it a little if you need to. If using magnets, you can glue these to the laser cut holes on the fuselage and the hatch. Stick some Velcro onto the battery tray. The other piece is attached to the battery itself. Use another strip to make a loop to securely strap the battery into place later. Now it's time to install the motor, servos and other electronics. Mount the servos onto the servo tray from the underside of the fuselage with the servo arms fitted. You can use linkages to hold the wire into place, which makes adjustments and installation much easier.
Stick the ESC into the compartment under the battery tray. Pass the ESC battery connector wire up through one of the rear holes so that it can be reached from the hatch. The motor can now be installed using the M3 screws or you can wait until later after the fuselage has been covered. Hook up the bullet connectors to the ESC and test the motor to make sure that it spins the right way. If it spins the wrong way, you will need to swap two of the bullet connectors around. Cut the elevator and rudder push rods to an initial length of 500 millimeters. The elevator push rod needs to be bent to reach the elevator control horn, so bend it a little like this at this 35 centimeter mark. Now you can test to see if they fit. Lightly tighten the servo linkages onto the push rods. Now you can mount the receiver inside of the aircraft, making sure that the channel pins for the ailerons are easily accessible. Locate and remove the underside sheeting for the nose. You can choose to use this alternative part if you want to build the underside intake detail included in the kit. Also find these parts for the rear underside of the fuselage. Gently wrap the sheet around the curve of the nose a little at a time whilst applying some CA superglue. Use sandpaper to round off the edges of the underside sheeting. The rear underside is covered using five sheet pieces located on sheet four. Stick them into place starting with the sheet next to the rear of the wing saddle and working towards the tail. Now we are going to make the tailplane and elevators. Find these parts and assemble as shown. Now for the wing. Firstly find all of these parts. Yeah. 
Insert the ribs as shown. Now lock these in place with the spar doubler. It might be a bit tight, but be gentle. Find the balsa rear spar and insert it into the notches cut out from the ribs. Add the trailing edge piece like this. Now slot in the wingtip piece, making sure to get it the right way round. Find the leading edge parts and insert them into the notches in the front of the ribs. Repeat these steps to construct the opposite side of the wing, and then remember to slot wing rib 1 into the centre notch on the main spar. Find a servo tray and while holding the wing flat against the surface, insert it here. If you want to add the extra radiator details to the underside of the model, find the wing radiator bases and add them like so. Use the two trailing edge plywood doublers and stick them into position on the underside of the two trailing edges, either side of the centre line of the wing ribs from 1 to 3. Add your wing servos like so, screwing them in from the underside of the wing. Feed the servo leads through the holes towards the centre of the wing and connect them with a suitable Y servo lead. Once this is complete, sand the wing to remove any lumps and bumps and round the leading and trailing edges as well as the wing tips. Now you'll have to assemble the ailerons. Just use the bases, the spars and the numbered ribs to piece these all together. Just make sure to build the two ailerons together to ensure that you have a left and a right hand aileron built. You should bevel the ailerons using sandpaper. We will have a dedicated video on this topic soon on our Get Started page of the website, so make sure to check that out to level up your aero modelling skills if you'd like to. Once you've covered your model, you can start on the final assembly. Make sure to cover the hatch separately to the fuselage. Firstly, you'll want to connect your control surfaces to the wings and your tail components using the kit's included mylar hinges. To do this, cut slots into the wood and splice them in one at a time, taking care to line up each part nicely. Again, there will be a video on this topic soon on our website help page. For precise locations and sizes of the cuts, see the text instructions for more detail. Add glue once you're satisfied with the fit. To glue the tailplane to the vertical stabiliser fin, you will probably need to remove some of the covering material for a good strong wood to wood bond.
slot the parts together, but don't add glue at this point. Remove the covering from the tailplane strut slots on the tailplane and either side of the fuselage. Insert the struts and ensure that everything looks straight and true before adding CA to all of the joints. These struts are structural and need to be seated correctly to result in a good strong tail assembly. Now you can assemble the rudder to the fin in much the same way that you installed the elevator. Next find the two control horn pieces and insert two linkages to the middle holes. You might have to drill these out a little to get them to fit as the default hole diameter is intended for pushrod wire with a Z-bend. Remove any covering from the slots in the elevator and rudder and install the control horns, gluing them into place nice and securely. Pass the push rod through the linkage, but leave it loose for now. For the ailerons, cut slots into the wings for some mylar hinges and repeat on the corresponding ailerons themselves. Slide the ailerons on and glue securely in place, making sure that they don't stick in one position to the wing. Remove covering and install two more control horns with linkages for the two ailerons. You can repeat a similar process to the tail surfaces to hook up some push rods. Cut some of the included wire to 65mm for each push rod. Here I chose to add a Z-bend to the wire to have a hard connection with the servo arm. You can make one too if you have a pair of pliers. Ensure that your servos are centered to make sure that your servo arms are positioned correctly at 90 degrees. Keep the linkages loose again so that you can adjust them later. Assemble the exhaust stacks like this. Cut two pieces of 1 8 dowel to a length of 4 inches or 100 millimeters and insert them into the holes so that the dowel has an equal amount on each side of the fuselage and secure in place with glue. Assemble the chin radiator intake like this. Stick this part in place once the fuselage has been covered. Assemble the wing radiators like so.
Cover them and stick them in place over the covered wing. The air intake is made by laminating four parts together. Sand the intake to a rounded profile and cover. Glue it approximately here. An accurate location is described in the text instructions. At this point you can set up your model for flight. Power up your radio and the model with the prop removed and tighten all of the linkages ensuring that the servos are centered. Attach the wings using the rubber bands included in the kit in this way. Of course, one of the most important steps to setting up your model is to make sure that the CG is correct. The BF109 should be balanced using the main spar, 52mm back from the middle leading edge, with the battery installed of course. More info on setup can be found in the instructions, but as a summary, check control direction that the deflection is 20mm left, 20mm right on the rudder, 20mm up and 20 millimeters down on the elevator, and 15mm up and 15mm down on the ailerons. Bolt on a balanced propeller and a balanced spinner at this point too if you wish. We would recommend that you do without a spinner if you are more of a beginner builder as these can be quite difficult to get perfectly balanced sometimes. And with that, your model should be ready for a maiden flight. Thanks for watching this video, thanks for building our model kit, and we hope you have many successful flights with it. Ha 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 ha!